how you doing? I'm doing a client session. This is actually a follow-up to cocaine addiction. So we have a cocaine addiction part one and now we're gonna have a part two. But there's an interesting twist. So the goals are, um, let's do a healing style session on cocaine addiction part two with the Theta Tari. I was like, what is Theta Tari? And it's this. It's a star system. It's, it's a star. Okay. It is a wide double star in the constellation of Taurus and a member of the Hades open cluster. Tari is composed of two third magnitude stars designated Theta Tari and Theta Tari. <laughs> Theta is brighter, hence the pair are sometimes referred to as Theta, Tari, B, and A, respectively. Theta, Tari. <laughs> okay, this is very, very cool. Thank you for introducing me to this, Theta, Tari. All right. I'm already feeling in the zone here. I want to thank you guys for experiencing this client session with me is a lot of fun to dive into these goals and see what we discover um, sharing healing with the client is also sharing healing with you and there's so much we can learn together if you're interested in exploring a session go to my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com and we can keep it private or we can share <laughs> also i'm on patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest all right, shall we get started? Okay. Theta Tari. Okay. Theta Theta Tari. Okay. <clears throat> Cocaine addiction. Theta Tari. We're just going to overlap these. And everything that I experienced in that first session was, it was quite a wild ride, really. And then I see you now, okay? <clears throat> and I'm adding you to this. It's like we've got a big stew here of cocaine addiction, Theta Tari, and you. And we're just stirring it all together. And then we're going to see what the meaning and the healing and the transformation with all of this intermixing and um, what it's going to become. It's like this alchemy that we are working with. You're really resistant, actually. Because here's cocaine addiction, here's Theta Tari, and then I bring them together. I could put them in the pot, no problem. And I'm adding you. You're another ingredient. And you're just like, mm not wanting to enter into the pot okay <laughs> come on now come on now we're all having fun here it starts to look like a hot tub and you're not really sure that you want to get in this hot tub it's like what all your friends are here we got the cocaine addiction we got the theta tari it's gonna be great hmm no my guide say because i was like okay well, let's forget about it and i'll just go to you and my guys are like nope um, so I literally just pick you up with like a cosmic hand and then I put you in the pot, okay? Because you're going to be a part of this. And you say it's ripping me apart. And you're actually being ripped apart one thread at a time. Like, like you're stitched and woven and then you're unraveling like a sweater. And so you're just like being unraveled in here and it's ripping you apart. It's, it's quite bloody actually. It's like a gross bloody thread that's coming out of you and you don't know how to intermix with all the meaning of this you just want to heal this that's all you just want to heal this it's p painful it's actually painful and it is because i i touch the string and it, it cuts into my finger and it represents pain it represents pain and so when i put you in this pot you're in pain and it's hard to it's hard to be in pain. It's interesting because cocaine addiction feels no pain, but, but the one that is enduring it does. It feels like cocaine doesn't feel any pain, but you, you're going to feel it. And then 
I don't know, I this the star, it keeps like erasing from my mind how to say it. Theta Tari. The T T. <laughs> Theta Tari. Is that peace? It's super peaceful. But you're in pain. This has to do with your sacral chakra and your heart and avoidance to something of your genuine and deep emotions. And I want to say that it, it then would relate to your solar plexus, but perhaps there's avoidance um, because it's quite quiet right now, okay? So you're just becoming a spaghetti noodle. I mean, you're like the infinite spaghetti noodle right now. And you're covered in a red sauce. It's just like this thread. It kind of remembers, reminds me of the, they're like the sisters of time. And they're like, there's past, present, and future. And then they cut the threads of time. And I see the thread has blood on it. And it's your blood. And... We can't cut this thread, and you just become a very, very long spaghetti noodle with mar marinara sauce on it. <laughs> and you're flimsy. You're flexible. You're kind of um, at the will of someone beyond yourself. We're still in this sort of cauldron of information. And it's a bit mysterious still. Like it's undecided in, in some way. Because you're not really choosing to be blended with it all. You're choosing to keep it all separate. But no, we're going to have to blend it all and it's going to all be a part of who you are. It's very hard to do this. You really reject the cocaine addiction. By blending with it does not make you an addict of, of cocaine. If it's something that you're conquering, um, it's just a part of your memory, you can say. You don't, it's like you really try to rinse or wring out the rag of what this means to you and you want nothing to do with it. Um, but actually to truly resolve this relationship, you're going to have to blend with it. And that's a very vulnerable thing for you to do. And I feel like the star is, is going to help um, nurture you through the process, okay? What's weird about it is when I look at the star, it glows, believe it or not, with it, there's lines of different shades of blue and then black. And it seems like it only looks like it's um, bright, like white light, but it's actually black. Um, it's extremely dark and, and so somehow that it's so dark that it makes it look like it's light. And it, it can be blinding even. It, how could black light be so bright that it could blind you? But it, it shows itself as actually made out of black. Um, the light of black, the ray of black, and then um, there's blues um, interwoven into it. And there's some very pale and beautiful glowing blues in here too. And it's made out of like threads of different colors, kind of um, interwoven like in a black ink. And it's uh, actually quite a nice adjustment when I'm not blinded by the light. Um, I actually can see clearly, and, and it's, it's quite wonderful to look into this unusual light. And I feel comforted by it. I'm suddenly standing on basically a dead rock. It even has um, pits in it, like you, you would see the moon has pits in it, like um, hit by uh, objects or, uh, of the universe so to speak. And it's, it's not a planet, but it's not a moon. It seems smaller than a moon to me. It's like the rock that like the little prince was on, this, this little tiny planet that he could walk around very quickly. And it is like, a, like an asteroid. And it's, um, nothing grows here. And this Theta Tari is wanting me to sit down like the little prince here on this rock and look into the light. And it, it's a very feminine energy. But you're extremely nervous to look into her eyes because when, sometimes it, it's almost like that feminine energy has knives and it can cut you. Like you don't know if it will cut you or not. 
I also see a baby being born and the umbilical cord is cut and for some reason there is a great deal of pain associated with this. Um, I feel the sensation of like literally somebody cutting my hand from my arm and that the umbilical cord being cut um, in this scene was actually is actually felt like the removal of a leg or something extremely painful and there's a screaming separation between the lifeline of the mother to the baby and now the baby having to nurture itself um, is not in the mother's womb being a hundred percent nurtured now must endure being alive and responsible for its own life I mean obviously nurture comes too in other ways but there's this um, we're like stuck in this scene where we're not able to cope with the suffering of separation and the painful cutting of the umbilical cord and somehow looking at the scene is comforting to you it, it doesn't hurt anymore and you look into her eyes and she's a beautiful woman she's a she glows with black light and she has like an aura around here that is different shades of blue and she's quite uh, balanced in her energy she's enormous like she's um, like larger than life and she she's like a life bringer she has the energy of of being like a mother earth type energy a life bringer energy and she's not um, gonna it's almost like she wants to get right straight to the root and she doesn't want to tiptoe or dance around she doesn't want to gently work our way there she just wants to go straight to the root and look at it and move on I feel like she's going to look a little bit um, dark okay but she's not she's actually healing that dark place so how you see her is actually um, revealing a, something inside yourself that you're actually working through it just seems to show up on her face as a mirror to what you what you are healing what, what it appears that she's doing is she she's appears to becoming um, very aggressive okay and she takes her cosmic hand and she wraps it around your heart like a vicious snake and then really really fast tightens and suffocates and then smiles as she slowly watches you, you die um, through her mighty hand and suffocation of your heart. It's like you're dying in her arms. And it's quite wonderful for her. Remember, this is not her. This is you. Um, and she's helping you to heal something. It just appears like she's the evil one doing this to you. And actually, you could say it already was done to you. You just need to see it now. So she's illuminating it for you. I would say working with this Theta Tari is, um, oh man, it is going to really help clear the bats out of the cave. But you've got to be ready because she doesn't um, waste any time. Like she's going to get right down to business and it could be scary. But whatever you're afraid of is not actually her. It's what she's illuminating inside of you. Um, so don't anything when you're working with her anything that may come up that might scare you um she's she's only illuminating the things that you haven't healed yet inside yourself and the reason you haven't healed it is because you don't know how to cope or to look at it or to feel about it so you just don't go there and you become numb and unaware that it exists then you bring her in she's going to illuminate it and now it's overwhelming so that's what this is like for me okay working with her All right, this is hear me out. This is pretty weird, but <sighs> as you're dying in her arms, I see um, there's a huge anchor and it, it kind of anchors have two, they're rounded at the bottom and they have like two hooks on the either side. Um, one of them is hooked up inside of your butt okay and the other is comes swinging around right into your heart. So literally you're hooked onto it. And it's, it's extremely uncomfortable and not something you can just get out of this. You're like stuck in a painful loop and it's piercing you. 
it's anchored into you. It's got you and you're dying in its arms forevermore, like, and it's laughing in your face. And I just tell you to just relax all of your muscles and feel this pain. Because when we resist things, they just linger. But when we feel things, we become more powerful than them. Because we're not afraid to feel the way things in the realm of pain can feel. And we become more powerful than pain. Pain will want to imprison you. But when you feel it, you will become more powerful than it. Very hard to ease into this one, I will say. Makes me want to vomit, makes me want to choke and gag. I feel like I've swallowed my tongue and I can't cough it out of my throat. I feel like somebody ripped my... I, I feel like my my sexual organs are both male and female and they've that's all been ripped out of me. Like it, Like a big hand, just like a big claw hand just came and ripped it all out of me. And I just have a big gaping hole here. And oftentimes when there's addiction, and it, we, it, the addiction has, a, um, has an effect on our pleasure senses. And so even if you're you know, not making love to, to cocaine, you are. That's the addiction. You are addicted to the relationship, which brings great pleasure. So it does um, have an impact on your sacral chakra. And so here, it, it is a big hole here in this space of your sacral chakra. She's going to become quite a lot uh, more uh, evil in appearance, okay? Oh, it's going to be freaking weird. Okay, so we just have to let this be what it is, but she's... I can't really understand it, but she's kind of, I guess, raping you on some level with a big hole in your body. And you're just like shish kebobbed, man. You, you can't do anything. You're just going to have to endure this. You're just a lifeless, limp spaghetti noodle. And you're just going to endure this. And I see the weavers of time, and I see the blood on their, like, it's like the thread cut their finger, and they bled onto the thread, and it was your blood. It was your pain. I see there's painful things here. Um, a hornet's nest. And they're relentless and they never stop stinging. And it seems to be overrun with pain from every angle now. But you know what's interesting is it's starting to fade away. And I see I'm still stirring up the pot. Because all we're doing is helping you to acclimate to, to the pain that you endured beneath the surface of the pleasure that you endured. Okay, so there was pain even if you weren't able to feel it like this. It existed there. And you're starting to be okay with... It's almost like the spirit of cocaine addiction is a real person. And you're kind of intermingling or it's like your souls are becoming one spirit. And you don't reject it. And you're not vulnerable to it either. You're just at peace with it, okay? But there's more layers to this. We've just got you through um, the, the initial getting you in the pot, now getting you acquainted with cocaine addiction, getting you acquainted with Thetatari. Um, <laughs> and we're getting through this, okay? We're circulating through this. So everything that we've seen in the realm of pain is actually um, being transmuted. Not by ignoring it or tur just turning our back to it or pretending it's not there or I don't feel anything. I'm completely numb. No, we're going to be present with it. We're going to feel it. And then we're going to feel our way through it until we've transmuted it.
man, you feel so much better. Even your sacral chakra is just, it's gleaming with a new sense of self. Even your heart, I feel your heart is gleaming with a new sense of self. Keep seeing a big white goose that's flying like the mother goose. She's enormous. She's like the biggest. I mean, she's bigger than an elephant. She's like the biggest goose ever known to mankind. Like, she's like so enormous. She's the biggest. I'm just like, how are you so enormous? You're just a big mother goose. You're enormous. Like a big cloud. She has a very, very peaceful eyes and a very kind smile. Even though she just looks like a white goose. It seems like she is smiling with very peaceful eyes. And we're flying on her back. She's taking us to a, a wonderland. Like a happy place. But she disappears and now we're in a world and the sky is like burnt red and it storms. It's black clouds swirling. And our bones are made out of black, like um, slick black, like tar. And we're kind of bony insect-like creatures roaming a desolate plain, okay? With the glow of red everywhere. There's nothing to eat here, so we just bone people that walk around. We have black bones. But we do feel um, stretched very thin, you could say. Very, very thin. It's a very trying place to exist. And even the heat is so overwhelming, it's hard to breathe. We have no skin. Like, literally, we are bone people that walk the land. And we don't necessarily speak. We we it's like we express our meaning through a, a hollow gaze in our eyes or a, a move of the hand it's like expressing our meaning which is completely stretched thin to the point that there is nothing more to say that only to walk as this like death walker of a desolate world where the death is upon us and you want to cry, but you have no tears, and you're completely dried up. And you cannot cry. And the, in all this storm, there's no rain that ever comes. There's no fruitfulness here. This is very hard for you. Something of your soul wanted to live between the world of life and death and wanted to walk, like walk that thin line, okay? <laughs> talking about cocaine and we're talking about walking a thin line. But yes, that's, that's what they're saying. And I'm asking your soul if you enjoyed the experience, if it was everything you ever hoped it would be. And we're talking about the genuine meaning, not like a metaphor or sarcasm or something funny. We're talking about genuine. Because it's genuine that your soul did want to walk between life and death. And to walk between life and death, you can become confused as what it means to be alive and what it means to be dead when you walk that line. You're going to have to say at the soul level, I'm waiting for your soul to say that you're ready to move on, that you have graduated from this and that you're ready for, let's just say, abundance or something, um, maybe more like a, a jungle that bears fruit or something. Um, not a death walker, desolate world. Something. Um, the problem is, is you, you've absorbed uh, memory from here. And so, in lack, you can find love. And that the problem is love is not lack, as in, it will be very hard for, I keep seeing trees that bear fruit. 
it would be hard for you to grow and bear fruit in love that it is associated with lack and that you must let go of your greatest love of all which is a love of lack and somehow this really um, creates ache in your heart and somehow in lack you find comfort in yourself which means that your self-worth is at a level of lack and you can only love yourself when you yourself are at the level of lack therefore you can fall in love with lack too and lack can be at your level and you can work together to perhaps rehabilitate but that's not what's going to happen because you were never honest with who you were in the first place because you never were lack and so you'll never find love in lack because you are honestly not lack so your relationship is a lie you can't leave it you can't leave this place you feel like lack needs you and you insist that it's not because you lack inside but that something that lacks inside needs you in order to conquer their lack and that you can be what is the abundance that conquers their lack and I say that no you you do actually um, are attracted to the lack in this one because you lack inside you say no no that's not right that's not correct And you cry and you say, I'll never leave, never leave. Lack needs me. And I see just this, this woman that is desperately needs you and you feel needed and wanted. But it's all just, mm, no, mm -mm. it's like something doesn't smell right here. <laughs> I, I just keep seeing this and I, I get a weird smell and it's like, that saying that something doesn't smell right here because it's this isn't right this isn't balance for you you haven't become aware of what is the correct balance for you and I'm sorry that this makes your heart um, feel love but this isn't real love I see you turn to a pile of dust basically and you blow around in the wind and you become a kind of a dust tornado not much of a tornado it's just more like a little whirlwind um, full of dust but you do spring up here and there and here and there again and you you travel the desolate world as dust basically and you're trying to run away from something it's like if the further you travel the further you can get away and now that you are dust you are different but yet you're still holding on to the same thing, the same pattern. <sighs> There's so it's just it's just like uh, an awareness thing happening here for you it's giving me a headache for sure it means you're you're awakening um, a new sense of sight about your relationship with yourself the world cocaine addiction and Theta, Tari, you know, all this stuff is interconnected. And, and the reason why you're requesting it is it's, there's meaning in everything. And your third eye is like an old shoe. It is literally like pooping out an old boot or something. It's just quite weird. And I get an awful taste of leather. leather. I'm like, I taste leather 
I'm chewing on leather for food, actually. But I, I just chew on it. I don't ever swallow it. I just chew on it. And I cry, and I find myself in a state of what could only be described as starvation, but sustainable starvation. I, and maybe there's uh, some kind of a release from the leather in, in its the juices, uh, uh, but because I'm swallowing the taste of leather, but not the actual leather pieces. And I feel that this is all that I have to, to eat. And I chew on this for long periods of time. Like for 10 hours straight. And it gives me comfort. It gives me something. It gives me some kind of sustenance. It gives me survival. And I dream a lot. And I have daydreams. So I am asleep and awake. And I am dreaming a lot. In both states. I start to see a woman. And the woman is pregnant. And she's becoming pregnant really like ridiculously fast. Like going from um, just conceiving to ready to have birth now. And it's just, she's very pregnant now, like, instantaneously. And we're holding on to something that we need to let go of. And the letting go is a good thing, because it is birthing something new into this world through you and your life lessons. And your relationship with cocaine. But they say it would be better to find as your relationship with lack because your cocaine addiction is just a relationship with lack as though lack is, is love. And you use cocaine to achieve it. Then a lack in yourself can be seen, can be found, can be felt. I will say something is different and I do feel like um, really sharp tiny little bit, bits of glass like very very small almost but I when I inhale it's almost like I inhale a thousand almost minuscule tiny little pieces of glass and then it, it gets in my lungs and it hurts my lungs actually really hurt over this and I'm crying a lot my lungs really really hurt and I'm crying a lot. I actually get a lung infection. And I know that I'm going to die now. And there's nothing I can do about it. And I cry because I wasn't ready for this. I cry. But what's interesting is there's a, a grace to it. There's a, again, it's a feminine energy here that's supporting you. And um, she helps comfort you in your sleep. And she says to come home to me. And I see that you are dried up and you just look like a dead, dried up body. No blood in it at all. Nothing. And your spirit goes to her. And you say, that wasn't as bad as I thought. I'm actually glad that happened. I was ready to come home. And then she shakes her head. And she says, no, you must wake up now. And then you wake up and you're like trying to catch your breath. And then you're just looking around in the dark saying, what am I doing? What am I doing? And you are in a struggle with yourself. So I just ask the um, Theta Tari if there's more that we can um, 
mend and heal in this process because there's no doubt about it i would define that your cocaine addiction manifested elements of trauma actually in your memory and your energy field memory but i also feel that you're purging it quite well you're healing it quite well so while we we look at it and it looks loud and extreme i, I think you're actually really washing the laundry of this um, and you're really wanting to wash it all nice and clean and feel like a refreshed new person. And I think that's what the attraction to this state of Tari is because her light is cleansing. Her light is revealing. Her light is transforming. And it's very honoring and respectful of her. So um, I would like to say that you have, um, instead of a relationship with lack, you have a relationship with abundance through her light. Because your attraction to her is already proof that you're in the jungle of bearing fruit because she represents a divine feminine figure that is abundantly full of light and transformation which is what you're starving for it is what you are genuinely attracted to and that is also reflective of who you are truly on the inside of yourself and that you've been able to find her is saying something about what you're finding inside of you and that's pretty cool <laughs> Thank you mu very much for this. And I've really enjoyed these last two sessions and getting to share here on YouTube. So thank you so much. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you have an amazing day.